Good evening. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight uh, for the midweek Bible study. Every week we uh, gather at 7 p.m. to uh, teach Bible study, like as has been our custom always, even prior to the current situation. We've always uh, had a family night and study the scriptures together. So um, we've been teaching about the parables of Jesus, teaching uh, the teaching parables of Jesus, and so uh, I'm going to continue on that theme. Uh, this might be one of the last ones, uh, uh, the last parables we teach. I'm not sure, but um, I know I felt like the Lord had put this one on my heart, so I'm looking forward to that. So we're just going to give um, just give a little bit of time for people to join us, um, some of our some more of our church family and friends that are here on uh, Wednesday evenings. So let's just uh, let's just give a couple minutes. How's everybody doing? Why don't you uh, do me a favor and send a greeting, send a God bless you or, or something. Let me know you, you're out there. I can't see everybody. Uh, only when you like make comments and stuff, I can usually see. God bless you though. Thank you for joining us. See some of our, our Temple of Faithful. Thank you for being on here. And so um, I don't have the whiteboard today. So our uh, our tech people are just going to uh, like my points and stuff, I'm just going to put them in the comments so you can just write them down or snap pictures of them and stuff like that. God bless you, Sister Lynette. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, just just say hi. Just give a greeting or something right now and just say hi. If you're from somewhere outside of uh, the local area, feel free to say hi there too. And uh, share. God bless you. Uh, Pastora Jackie, good to see you on here. Um, yeah, just just take a minute, say hi, greet each other. Greet me, greet the Temple family, and uh, we're going to be teaching, just so you know, out of Luke 18, uh, Luke 18, uh, verse 1 through 8. So very good. God bless you, uh, Sister Lulu. Good to see you on here. Um, this, it's a familiar passage, I believe, uh, but there's some, there's some riches in there. Well, there's always riches in the scripture, but um, there's, there's some really good teaching in here. So um, looking forward to this. So, uh, parables of Jesus, Luke 18, the, per, the parable of the persistent widow. So, uh, we're going we're gonna to learn about persistent prayer tonight. And I think it's going to be just uh, something that's good, just uh, something good to go over. And I think persistent prayer is definitely uh, what we need in this time. We need to be praying more than ever uh, before. And so, the Lord is looking to us, His faithful, His people, to call upon His name that his kingdom would come, his will would be done, his purposes would be fulfilled in the land at this time. So, so um, this is a good parable to go over. And it also mentions even justice, so that's good because that's definitely a hot topic. Um, uh, and not just that, it's a topic, it's a, a topic that we're seeing. It shouldn't, shouldn't necessarily be a hot topic. Justice should always be something we're uh, concerned about. So God bless you, Brother Danny. So let's give another minute. And then we'll get into the we'll get into the scriptures for the sake of time. How about that weather, huh? <laughs> it's muggy. Humidity. All right, so I think we're gonna go ahead and, and get started. Turn with me, please, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, starting with verse 1. And I just want to remind you, uh, we're teaching on the parables, and the parable, as we've taught before, a parable is a, is a story, typically a comparison or an analogy, uh, it's a uh, had word pictures in it, pictorial sayings and stories, all kinds of different stories. Jesus, uh, Jesus was, a, was the master storyteller, and so he'd use a lot of parables. People, even in Matthew 13, 34, uh, they said, man, this guy never teaches without a parable. It's, it's how often he used them. So they're a big part of his ministry. Uh, some people count up to 46 parables in the teachings of Jesus. So definitely a big part of his ministry. Uh, and he used it effectively because he was the, the great teacher. Uh, greatest teacher. So, uh, what what are the purpose? What's the purpose, or what are parables all about? What, how did Jesus use them? 
Well, basically, uh, the simple answer to that is every parable, uh, all 46 of them, they all describe to us, uh, the, audience, the audience there at the time, and us now who read the scriptures, uh, it, it describes to us or teaches us some aspect of the kingdom of God. So um, that's the main point of the parable, is to teach us all something, some aspect of of the kingdom of God. And so uh, it's important to know that. So every parable has some aspect, some, some, uh, some teaching, something to describe to let us know about what the kingdom of God is all about. Also, um, I mentioned this as well, every parable has one central truth. So you'll, hear, you'll see people teach and preach on the parables, and they'll pull out a lot of points, but there is one central point, or if you remember... Um, taking English classes, there's one thesis, right? You write a paper, there's a thesis statement, there's a thesis to your paper, one central truth or point um, to every parable that Jesus taught have one central point. There could be several in there, but there's one central point. And so this one's a little more clear. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read Luke 18, starting with verse 1 uh, through verse 8, and then we'll just get into some, some, uh, some truth in God's Word. So Luke 18, starting with verse 1, says, Then he, he being Jesus, spoke a parable to them. He said that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, here goes, he's getting into the parable now. So he's, he's telling everybody there that's listening to him uh, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Then he went into the story. There was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, that's a sad thing, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? That's interesting. He says, hear what the unjust judge said. He said, this, this widow basically is wearing me out, so I'm just going to avenge, avenge her. He said, and shall not God avenge his own elect to cry out day and night? And he's talking about prayer. Uh, though he bears long with them, and I tell you that he'll avenge them speedily. But then at the end, he kind of just throws in the statement that doesn't seem to go with the parable or, or what Jesus is talking about, which is persistent prayer. So nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? So that's kind of just like a, at, kind of out of, out of, out of, uh, out of context, it, it feels like, or just a different, different subject that's kind of just brought in at the end, but they actually do go together. So um, I want to pray. Then we'll get into uh, the parable a little bit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we could be gathered to, uh, together here uh, tonight, uh, studying your word, studying the parables, learning more about the kingdom. Lord, tonight, learning more about persistent prayer. Uh, we thank you, Lord, because you taught, uh, you taught in such a way, you're the master storyteller, and so you taught in such a way that uh, it would impact your hearers and impact us today. So Lord, we ask you to speak to us. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying through the parable of the persistent widow. Speak to our hearts. There's something that you want to say to us tonight, all of us who are gathered, something you want, us, you want to teach us, Lord, that we can uh, either reestablish or, uh, or reaffirm uh, things that you've already taught us. Lord, we've been taught since we've, we've, been, uh, since we've been saved, uh, Lord, that we ought to pray. And you taught us in this parable, we ought to pray, man ought to pray and not lose heart. So, Lord, give us eyes to see what you want to show us. Penetrate our heart with the light of the gospel. Most of all, be glorified through the teaching of your word. Uh, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Lord, may you just bring us closer to you uh, tonight. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And together we say amen and amen. Again, I want to encourage you to uh, like or love, uh, make comments. Um, anything resonates with you, 
feel like the Lord's illuminating, highlighting something to you, just uh, encourage you to just type it in the comments, or I encourage you really to write it down and go back to it and ask Holy Spirit to uh, continue to, to give you more revelation on it. But um, So we're talking about uh, Luke 18, and the, Lord, the, Lord, the parable starts out before Jesus gets in the story. He says uh, that he spoke, he sa- it says, he spoke a parable to them uh, that men always ought to pray and lose heart. So we, I said there's one, always one central theme in every parable. In this, in this uh, parable, Jesus says it right in the beginning, even before he starts the story, he already gives us a central truth. Uh, in other places, like in the, uh, the scattering of the seed, uh, Jesus explains it afterward. But here he gives his, his thesis statement or his central truth. And then he, then he gets into the parable. So the, the whole point of this parable is that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Somebody say that with me. Men always ought to pray. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. And so that's the point. That's the, the, central, the central truth of this parable. We should always pray and not lose heart. Really, he's saying always pray and don't stop. Always pray and never quit. Never give up. Never, never cease to pray. The Apostle Paul said, Pray without ceasing, he said to the Thessalonian church. And so really what we're learning in this, in this uh, parable is we need to pray, not lose heart, never give up, don't stop, don't quit. Uh, but really what we're being taught as well, going along with that, is that prayer is an obligation. It's our responsibility, and we should be diligent and persistent. So Jesus is really... Uh, really taking it a little further. He's not just saying, hey guys, you know, please pray or, you know, please, you know, don't stop praying. What he's really teaching us is that it's our responsibility. It's our obligation. We are obligated to pray. Uh, How how can we call ourselves a Christian if we're not praying? We say Christianity is a relationship with God, but if there's no prayer, how is that relationship being maintained? So I don't want to make it feel like a burden because some people may think it's obligated or mandatory that it's a burden, but it's not a burden. The commands of God are not burdensome. Uh, We can make them burdensome to ourselves, but they're not burdensome. We should pray always, Jesus said, and not lose heart. So basically what he's saying is there's going to be times when you don't feel like praying. There's going to be times when you're going to want to quit praying. You're going to feel like I've been praying a long time and I still haven't seen justice. I still haven't seen uh, an answer. And Jesus is saying you always ought to pray and not lose heart no matter what. He didn't say just pray when it feels good. Don't pray. He didn't say you can pray as long as things are going well, but once things get difficult and the adversary is coming against you, you know, you can let off the throttle a little bit or you can back up or you can back off or you can stop for a while until things get better. In fact, things won't get better sooner unless we're praying. And so Jesus is saying it's an obligation. It's our responsibility to pray. We must be praying diligently and persistently is what he's teaching us here. So uh, who are the people involved in this parable. So we, we call it the, the parable of the persistent widow. And we always talk about the judge uh, that she goes to who's unjust. So we always talk about the widow, the persistent widow. And so a widow is one of the most helpless of society. Her husband has died. He, and in that society, in that culture, the husband uh, was the provider, was the, the many times, most of the time, sole provider or main provider. And he was also the protector. So a widow was very vulnerable, very helpless. And it wasn't always uh, a widow like of old age. It could be even a, a younger woman. Uh, the, the life expectancy was different at that time. So um, that's a very vulnerable person. And her, she's lost her protector and her provider. And so uh, she's going to this judge uh, for, uh, for protection, for justice. And so we find in this uh, parable, we, we know the persistent widow. We know about the judge, but we often miss the fact that there's a third person in the parable. Can somebody tell me who that is? Type it in there real fast if you know. You know like if you know it right away. There's a third person in the parable. Do you know who it is? <laughs> well, we can always kind of throw God in there, like outside. No, but the, there's a third person that's mentioned in there. Come on, look real quickly. It's, a, it's in verse 3. Last word of verse 3. So we have... 
the widow, we have the unjust judge, and we have a third person. The adversary. So the, or as some versions say, oppressor. So it's, there's the, the unjust judge, the, 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 the widow, the judge, the widow, and the adversary. And so we, that's often neglected or t not always taught about when we talk in this, teach on this parable. So but there's the, the unjust judge, the widow, and the adversary. So in this parable, we often only pay attention to the judge and the widow. Uh, the judge who neither fears God nor regards man, that's really, uh, he's, he's, that's, he's an evil man, he's a wicked man, uh, and uh, he's, he's uh, unjust. And that's a sad statement to say he fears God. He's virtueless, basically. He's, he's without virtue. He, fear, he doesn't fear God and doesn't regard man. He finally, in this story, this really short story that Jesus told, he finally avenges the widow. He didn't want to. It wasn't his first inclination. First, in fact, he resisted her. He tried to ignore her. Hope, hopefully, if I just don't do anything, she'll go away. Well, he finally relents, and he, he avenges the widow because of her persistence. Because of her persistence. And so we conclude, So we, this is what we conclude. The, Jesus teaches this in the parable. He says, since our God is not an unjust judge, but he's, he's a just judge, he's the most just judge. He's the God of the, he's the judge of the earth. And we were told in Genesis and he, and he always does what's right. Our God is not an unjust judge like this guy in the story. So will he not? So Jesus is saying, will he not speedily avenge us if we pray? That's the whole point. If we pray, God, who is not an unjust judge, will speedily avenge us. Somebody say speedily avenge us. Unjust, so the unjust judge, some people have, will teach or have taught the unjust ju judge in this story is God. No, no, it's clearly not God because God, is, is, it says he does not fear God nor regard man. So that could not be representative of God. So this guy is saying even if a, a, of a bad judge, an, an unjust judge, a wicked, evil judge will finally relent, relent to a persistent widow, how much more God, who's a just judge, will he respond and avenge us speedily if we pray? We don't. We don't have to beg God for justice. He's a God of justice. So uh, we would never have to beg and pound and plead, you know, and, and, you know, and ask God, you know, throw ourselves down and say, God, will you please uh, bring justice? That, that's not our God's character. So that we would never have to approach him that way. We, we just have to be persistent in our prayers. And so uh, Jesus' point in the parable, in, in mentioning this, is that we must have faith and be persistent in our prayer. So we learn a few things about prayer I want to mention. Five things I want to mention real quickly from this story we learn. Number one, so we're going to type this in the comments. Hopefully we can get them in there. I'll try to give enough time. Number one, prayer is how we communicate our concerns to God. Prayer, we learn in this parable, prayer is how we communicate our concerns to God. Do you have a concern? You communicate to, to God through prayer. The widow went to the judge. We go to God, who is, who is our judge. So prayer is how we communicate our concerns to God. We learn, this, we learn that from this parable. Prayer is how we communicate our concerns to God. We must keep praying about all things until Jesus returns. Man always ought to pray and not lose heart. So we're taught, this is still number one. Prayer is how we communicate our concerns to God. We must keep praying about all things. We always ought to pray and not lose heart, Jesus said. Always ought to pray. How often should we pray? We should always pray and not lose heart. We always ought to pray and not lose heart. Always ought to pray. So we should pray about all things. We must keep praying about all things until Jesus returns. Uh, number two, in this life, we will face injustice. In this story, a widow, a vulnerable person, she's facing injustice and there's uh, injustice, and, and we know this right now in our time, uh, we're dealing with injustice. It, in, injustice is being broadcast very loud and very broad right now. We're, we're hearing about injustice all the time. And so all many, all many kind of different injustices. And we've talked about that. I, I preach about that on some Sundays. Um, we're dealing with injustice. I'm, there's always been injustice. Man has fallen because of sin. Uh, man has sin in their heart. And so there's always going to be injustice. There's always going to be uh, Man, man hurting other men and for different reasons. It all boils down to one thing, though. Man has fallen because of sin, and that's why Jesus Christ had to come. 
And that's why he, after Jesus died and resurrected and went back to heaven, he ascended uh, up back to heaven. He sent Holy Spirit to come to fill us so that uh, our hearts would not be filled with wickedness. We would surrender our lives to God and to the leading and guiding and teaching and leadership of the of Holy Spirit, then we would not treat each other this way, but we would love God and love our neighbor uh, as ourselves. So um, in this life, we'll face injustice. Today, we're hearing about the injustices of racism, poverty, homelessness, human trafficking. Uh, I mean, we can go on and on. There's so many injustices in this world. So um, uh, in this life, so we're told uh, Jesus doesn't deny injustice. And we can't be so thrown off by injustice. We need to pray about injustice is what Jesus is telling us. There's going to be injustice. You have to pray about it. Go to God, the judge, the just judge who cares, and uh, he will bring justice speedily. Uh, the third thing, so number two, in this life we will face injustice. Number three, our main adversary is Satan. But prayer will, prayer will protect us from the evil one. Our main adversary is Satan. We learned there's an adversary. The widow had an adversary. It didn't name Satan, but it's very clear that we are the widow in this story, and we're his people, his church, his people. Uh, the adversary is, is the devil, is Satan, so uh, that's not really hard to conclude. And so we're reminded, though, our main adversary is Satan, but prayer will protect us from the evil one, right? It's even in the Our Father prayer, uh, protect us from evil, right? So, um, or protect us from the evil one. So we know that's in there as well. Is anybody with me? Miss somebody uh, give me an amen out there. Somebody give me an amen. Somebody type in an amen. Let me know that you're with me. So number one, prayer is how we communicate our concerns to God. We must keep praying about all things until Jesus returns. I'm so happy to be talking about Jesus return again. When I got saved, that's all they talked about. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Cristo viene pronto. Cristo viene pronto. And that kind of that kind of uh, wasn't said quite as frequently for a long, long time. But uh, I think we're starting to we're starting to get that back a little bit. Two things. Two things. Uh, Jesus Christ is coming soon. Uh, we're starting to hear that again a little bit. And uh, we're talking a lot more about the glory of God. Everything's about the glory of God. My life is about the glory of God. Uh, my family's about the glory of God. Anything we do is to the glory of God. My character is about the glory of God. Anything we're doing is about the glory of God. And so I'm so glad that that's, uh, that's kind of, I could see uh, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit bringing, uh, bringing that back, uh, uh, re reinstating that on a, on a greater measure again, uh, the way I remember. So I love that. Everything's about God's glory. We can never forget that. Everything's about God's glory. Uh, number four, so number two in this life will face injustice. Number three, our main adversary is Satan, but prayer will protect us from him. Number four, in our prayers, we should cry out against sin and injustice. In our prayers, in our prayers, we should cry out against sin and injustice and ask God to demonstrate his perfect justice. Okay, in our prayers, we should cry out, you and I, in our prayer time. In our prayer time, we should... Make t room in our prayer time to cry out, literally cry out to God about sin, against sin and injustice. Right? We hear about things like what happened in Lebanon. There's a city devastated, thousands injured, many, many, many died. We should, we should pray. There's, there's an injustice there. They weren't protected. There, the, 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 I don't know all the details, but I know there's that... that that explosive material was there for a long time. It wasn't dealt with, and it exploded. As beyond that, I don't know, but the people who were supposed to protect the, the, the inhabitants of that city did not do it. That's an injustice. They're, they're there in positions of authority. They did not take care of them. I don't know why, but that's an injustice because now there are many widows. There are many orphans. That's injustice because that didn't have to happen. It's, it's not just that this thing wasn't handled properly. And now people, many, many multitudes of people are suffering. So we have to be aware of these things. So many people uh, suffering in different parts of just, and we could just talk about America. There's a lot of injustice. So it's our responsibility as the church to pray against sin and injustice and ask God to demonstrate his perfect justice. We ask God to say, God, you're the judge of the earth. You always drink, bring, uh, you always do what's right. Bring justice to this situation. Bring justice, Lord. Bring justice to, to these, these, unjust, these unjust things that are taking place amongst our nation, these people. This, let's be specific. And let's be specific in our prayers. It's very important we be specific in our prayers. Okay, don't, 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 uh, don't be afraid to be specific with the Lord. Like pray for exactly, like what, what, whatever, whatever you're praying about or whatever injustice you're speaking about, um, 
um, get, get in there and, and state specifically what the scriptures say about that injustice or what you know to be God's heart and character towards it, but pray specifically. And so uh, God, will, God responds to those prayers. And so um, it's very powerful to pray specifically as well. And then what's powerful about it is when you pray specifically and you see God answer it specifically the way you prayed it, it's just even just a, a, an encouraging and a strengthening of our faith. So number five, steadfast prayer. So Jesus is saying, man, I always ought to pray and not lose heart. Steadfast prayer or faithful, persistent prayer shows our faith and trust in God. See, this is something that we, I don't think we always realize when we don't pray. When we don't pray, we're saying, we're saying in a sense, pretty much, with, maybe it's not with the thoughts that's, cr that's crossing our mind, but in a, pretty much what we're saying is, God, I don't, I don't depend on you. And so if you're not depending on God, who are you depending on? Most likely yourself, right? That's basically a statement of a prayerless Christian is, God, I don't depend on you. I depend on myself because if I depended, see, the widow is a good uh, analogy of us. She's weak. She's vulnerable. She, she has not strength of her own to fight the adversary. That's us, really. We cannot fight the adversary on our own. We need, we need Christ. We need the, the power of the Holy Spirit. We need God our Father to fight on our behalf, as it says in Deuteronomy. We need, we need, we need God. Uh, we can't just do it on our own strength. We just can't, we just can't uh, try to hold off or fight off the, the adversary in our, own, in our own strength, in our own ability, uh, because we're not strong enough. We need the Father. We need, we need the Son. We need the the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God. That's why we pray um, that he be defeated in our lives. So pr prayer shows our faithfulness to God, demonstrates our weakness and how much we really need God to depend on God. So when I don't pray, um, then I'm taking it upon myself. And so that's, that's not really, that's not how God designs it. That's not how God wants it because he knows that uh, we're weak uh, without him. So, and uh, God forbid that any of us think that we can do any of this on our own. It's all the grace and mercy of God. It's all the power of God. So, um, also, steadfast prayer shows our faith, our faith and trust in God. And there is a, there is a kind of eschatology, you know, last days statement at the end. So, um, though, so just kind of give you an idea of why Jesus says that. It's because he had been teaching around, around, around Luke 18. He's been teaching about the last days, the end times. And so he's, he's taught a couple, he's, met, he's taught a few things about it. So he kind of he ties prayer into the end times. So, and I'll show you, I'll show you how. So in the final days before Christ's return, listen, in the final days before Christ's return, there will be an increase of demonic or satanic opposition to the prayers of God's faithful people. In the end, we're warned, not just by Jesus here, but uh, even uh, the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy warns us about in the last days, um, there'll be, people will be unju unjust, uh, unholy. And he gives us a long list in, in 2 Timothy 3, about how people are going to fall away. Uh, they have people who want their ears tickled, um, have a, uh, basically said they have like an image or a presentation of power, or, you know, they, they claim God, but they lack the power uh, of God in their lives. And so he warns us that in the end days, it will be like that. So we need steadfast prayer. It shows our faith and tr uh, trust in God. In the final days before Christ's return, there'll be an increase of demonic uh, opposition to the prayers of God's faithful people. So Jesus is saying, it's going to get, it's going to increase but resist the urge to quit praying. See, sometimes we think when the enemy's attacking us, we can't pray, or it's harder to pray, so we just don't pray. Jesus is saying that when that happens, resist the urge to stop praying. When things happen in our lives, we have to resist the urge to stop praying. Sometimes we're going through it, you know, in our family, in our finances, and in ministry, whatever, in marriage. We're going through things uh, at work or at school, you know, relationships, and... It's, uh, it affects us, and it really, I've seen it happen so many times, it causes us to step back and shrink back, and, and people tend, uh, many times tend to pray less. And in actuality, that's why we, we, need, we actually need to be praying more, but at a minimum, the same that we've been praying. So, so let, me, let me explain this to you real quickly. That's why it's so important that we build a consistent prayer life. Not just persistent, but consistent. What, what do I mean by that? I mean consistently praying every day. The best way to do that is set a, a, 
an appointment with God every single day. Pray the same time and, and build your prayer life to be a consistent thing uh, so that uh, it just, it's a part of you. It's a habit, just like getting up, like when you go to work, right? If you've been at your job for a certain amount of time, you know, for a little while now, you, you're consistently get up, maybe make, you make your coffee, eat something, or maybe you do later, but you have this time you get up, you shower, you have a routine, and you're consistent, and you get to work at a certain time, you're building consistency. Our spiritual life needs to be the same way. And so we build consistency. So this is why, let me, this, let me explain to you why that's so key, is because when things come, when the adversary comes, when the trials, tribulations, storms of life come, if you have consistency, you just keep doing what you've always done. But if you have an up and down prayer life, some days, you know, when you wake up feeling good, you pray and other times you don't. Maybe you got into it with somebody at work or something uh, it happened somewhere else. And then that day, because you're not feeling your best, then you don't pray. And then, you know, two days from now, you feel good again. You don't pray. You do pray. And then you don't feel good. So you don't. So you have this inconsistent prayer life, and people do that with church too. I feel good, I go to church. I don't feel good, I don't go to church. You know, feel good next week, I go again, I don't feel good. People do that with their tithing. Oh, I feel good sometimes. You know, when I feel good, I tithe. And when I don't feel good, I don't tithe. Um, that's an inconsistent up and down. Uh, the Apostle James would call it double-mindedness Christianity. And that, that's really difficult way to walk, to walk with God. That's not, that's not, a, that's not, a, a, that's not a joyful journey. So we have to discipline ourselves. That's why Apostle Paul said you got to discipline yourself like an athlete. Um, you know, when it comes to the spiritual, uh, the spiritual disciplines in our life, if we build a consistent life, consistent in prayer, consistent in reading God's word, consistent going to the house of God, consistent in our giving, consistent in, in our sharing our faith, consistent in, in, the, in the foundational areas of our life, our character, uh, things like that. When we build consistency, then when, so what happens is the storms of life come or the devil attacks us the way he attacked Job or he attacked Jesus or he attacked the, the Apostle Paul. If we just keep every morning, I get up at six o'clock and I pray for an hour or I pray and read my Bible for an hour. Or I get up at 530 and I pray for a half hour or whatever it is you do. Or I know some people love, like to go out on prayer walks, but you do that every single day. See, you just keep doing what you've always done. It's not like every day, like right now, every day is a, 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 like a coin toss. Today, I feel like praying. Uh, tomorrow I don't, and so on and so on. I'm not trying to throw stones at anybody. I'm just saying, uh, you know, it tends to be that way. I've seen it. I'm not just making it up. But I see that could happen. It even happens to, to the best of us. Uh, we, have, we go through periods like that. We realize, man, I need to step up my game. I need to build consistency because that's the only way to grow in Christ. And so I'm, I'm encouraging you to build consistency in your life so when the enemy comes, you're just going to always just keep doing what you've always done. You'll keep your joy. You'll keep your peace. You'll keep your love. You'll keep your relationship with Christ, and you won't feel like you're being tossed around. Uh, by the waves. And so I encourage you to do that. Uh, somebody give me a, a, an amen. That's a good time to say amen. So, um, Jesus saying in the last time, the last days, final days, demonic, satanic oppression is going to increase. Pray God will protect you from the evil one and resist the urge to, to quit praying because of, the, because of the devil's schemes and devices, pleasures of this world. Many will give up a persistent prayer life. That's why Jesus warns us because he, kn he knows that when things increase because of the devil's schemes and devices, because of his attacks, uh, and, be and also because the pleasures of this world, we're, people are drawn to them, especially when we're not praying. Those, those, thing those things are more tempting to, to the believer. And so many will give up a persistent prayer life, Jesus said. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Somebody say that with me. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So, so in the parable, Jesus says, it's like his elect who cry out to him day and night. So you see, he's talking about persistent prayer. Men always ought to pray, not lose heart. Uh, his elect, he talks about his elect who cries out to him day and night. So we see kind of an example there. Uh, the elect who cry out to him day and night. Elect that cry out. He's, after he says the parable, that he compares, uh, he says, hear what the unjust, unjust judge said. Shall not God, the judge said, what did the judge judge? He said, I'm getting tired of this widow. I'm going to give her justice. And then the Lord said, that, you hear what he said? What about God? Shall he not avenge his, his own elect? So if the widow could get justice from the unjust judge because she was persistent, how much more God will he uh, avenge his elect, meaning you and I, uh, who cry out to him day and night? So you hear that crying out day and night. So it's not just um, day, it's not just night. But day and night, so there's this consistent and persistent prayer. 
Now, if someone who isn't godly will respond to someone who continue to please with them, how much more will God respond to his devoted followers who continually pray for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done in the earth and for his purposes to be fulfilled in the earth? Uh, and for also praying for Christ to return, uh, to destroy Satan's kingdom. Ultimately, when Christ uh, comes, we pray for his return. Uh, when he comes, he's going to destroy the kingdom of darkness. He's going to destroy uh, the enemy and the world system, right? So that's justice. We pray for Christ to return. See, we shouldn't pray for Christ to return because we can't handle our lives here. No, Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. We, we'll see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Psalm 27 says. So we're meant to enjoy God here. God enjoys us and we enjoy him. We walk with God, right? And so we shouldn't really, our, 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 our lives shouldn't say, oh, I can't take it here anymore, I, you know, because of this or because of that. I just want Jesus to return. That, that's not really how we're supposed to be praying that prayer. It's more about we want Jesus to return because we see the injustice in the world because of sin, and we long to, he longs to be with us, and we long to be with him. So it's not about, oh, man, my life is so difficult here. I feel so defeated and discouraged all the time. I just would, Jesus would just, leave, uh, just come and get me out of here so I could leave. No, that's not really the point. We, we, we want Christ to return. One of the things that will facilitate that is the spreading of the gospel to, to the entire world. Uh, but we should not, that's not really where we're supposed to be praying that prayer from. We pray, and ultimately it's justice, because the kingdom of darkness will be defeated in the world system. And so that's, that's, a, that's, part, of, that's part of our prayer of justice, is that uh, Christ will return. And so uh, Christ wants his followers to participate in his plans through prayer, and he'll give justice to them. So what's God's plan on the earth? What's his purpose? How will his, his kingdom coming, his kingdom advancing? That happens through our prayers. That's how justice comes through our prayers. It's, God does nothing in the earth except through the prayers of his saints. So if we want God to do something. God, God wants to do something through Holy Spirit in us. He leads us to pray about whatever that is. And so we need to pray, and that includes justice. So with all the social justice issues that we're facing now in America, God expects you and I, all of us, uh, to be praying about those things um, and on some level. And we, that's why we do that on our prayer meetings, our Friday night prayer meetings. We'll, we'll pray about those injustices because we know that that's part of God's plan. He wants to bring justice to those situations. And it's not just us. It's many people, many churches, many believers praying for those things. Together, uh, we're, we're the elect. We're crying out Friday nights. Another church is crying out uh, Saturday mornings. Another church, you know, uh, there's prayer houses that are praying continuously for justice. So day and night, the elect are, are calling out. And so we're just calling out, calling out, calling out for God's justice. You know, and uh, that, that verse about the elect crying out day, day and night, God said, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer that, those prayers. I want you to pray those prayers. Like, I need you to pray those prayers because it's my, it's my will to bring justice. But I need you to have my heart and release those. I put it on your heart, you release it back to me. And it's going to happen. But, you know, there's a verse in Revelation 6, 9. So now we're getting into, like, Revelation is like end times. Like, we're there, we're there in the book of Revelation. Uh, but there's going to be people who are martyred in the book of Revelation. And uh, the Apostle John, in chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, he said, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, so believers. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So even, even uh, the martyred saints under the altar uh, in heaven are crying out for justice and God, and God to avenge the adversary. And so it's interesting that uh, it's not just later, but even now, Jesus is teaching us in the parable uh, to pray against our adversary and for justice. So, uh, again, uh, our prayer, I mentioned three people in the prayer. There's the judge, the widow, and the adversary. Uh, our prayers have three aspects. So, uh, us, the God we pray to, our God who we pray to, and our enemy. And so when we come to pray, we naturally pray for our own benefit, right? We pray. Um, Jesus taught us to pray. Uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So we're praying for our needs. We pray for our benefit. Uh, we're we were taught to pray that way by Jesus, but not, that's not all we pray for. Uh, we have needs, and we have wants and expectations, so we pray, as Jesus taught us to pray in the Our Father prayer, the model prayer. Uh, we should also pray for the glory of God and for heaven's rule over the earth, right? We also learned that in the, in the Our Father, the model prayer, right? For God's kingdom to come, for... Uh, for his, his, his rule, heaven's rule over the earth. 
And then, so there's us, there's God. So when we pray to God and he answers our prayer, that's to his glory. So our prayers involve us, but more importantly, it involves him and his glory. Because when God hears his children, when he, when he avenges, when he brings justice, when he answers, uh, it's to his glory. So just know, even when you're praying, you're giving God glory. The fact that God could even take somebody like you or me, I'll just speak for me, somebody broken, messed up uh, like me, and even give me a desire to pray uh, is, is a miracle in itself. And that he would even answer uh, any of my prayers is, is just unbelievable to me because uh, I know I'm not worthy, and I would, I would say none of us are worthy of God's goodness and grace uh, that he would answer any of our prayers or petitions, but it's a testament to his goodness. It's, a, it's for his glory that, that he answers his prayer. It's about him. And so when we pray, it's to his glory. When he answers, it's for his glory. So when, when, when we don't pray, we, we are losing opportunities for God to be glorified, right? We love to talk about our answered prayers. Like, we, like man, God is so good. He answered my prayer. He, he did this. He did that. Like, I never thought this could happen. It's a miracle. We pray, and that's to God's glory. We testify. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What are we testifying about? What God has done in our lives, right? And many of that is answered prayer. When you and I got saved, it was an answer to somebody's prayer. Somebody prayed for you and me to get saved, and we were saved. That's, that's to our benefit, but it's to God's glory. That's a good time to say amen. So, um, and then also, as we pray to the Lord, as we pray to the Lord, watch this. What we ask and what God promises will unquestionably hurt the enemy. Right? So when God's purposes are fulfilled, when he answers prayer, when God does something to glorify himself, ultimately, God, God does something in your, your my life. He advances his kingdom through us, through our prayers when he brings justice, avenges the adversary, when God does those things, the enemy is, is, is uh, his kingdom is hurt, he's hurt by God's activity in our lives and what he does uh, through his kingdom. And so, since we belong to God, so since we belong to God, that's why we can't forget the adversary, us, God, and the adversary. There, there's still an adversary. We can't forget about that when we pray. Satan intends to frustrate, afflict, or suppress us and allow us no foothold. Try to prevent us from advancing. As God hears our prayers, Satan's plan is definitely defeated. So whatever we gain in prayer, whatever we, you or I gain in prayer is Satan's loss. It's a loss of the enemy. So we, need to, so we need to identify the enemy, right? We should know who is our adversary. We need to know who the devil is and what he's trying to do because he causes us suffering. So we need to be aware and identify him. And so how frequently, how frequently you and I count our sufferings we say, oh, so-and-so did it. We count it as man. But how, how many times has it actually been the enemy? The Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, that, uh, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world, world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. A lot of times we're fighting people when it's actually the enemy we should be fighting about. We should look, like, what's behind this? Like, have you, have you ever, like, been... Been maybe something happened to you, you're betrayed, lied on, backstabbed. I mean, some, some, some injustice happened to you kind of unexpectedly. Something caught you off guard, felt like a sucker punch, um, or just this kind of strife that just gets brought up. And you're like, where's this coming from? Man, maybe things have been going good, and all of a sudden, like this old thing just comes up in your face, or somebody accuses you of something. I mean, just it could be a number of things, right? And right away, like it's totally not true. That's not what was in your heart. Maybe that's not even what you did. Uh, or maybe it's an old thing that's already uh, been forgiven or you moved on from or what, whoever, like things like that. And you just kind of knew like, this just is kind of coming out of nowhere. Right? You, you got, and you, say, you sense there's something, something going on here. I don't think it's, I don't think it's just this issue. So, and it's actually someone is stirring this up. And I'm, I'm telling you that that's likely the adversary. And a lot of times it is the adversary. And so rather than get into it with people, we should be praying. We should be taking authority in Jesus' name, pleading the blood, binding the enemy. We should be putting on the full armor of God. We should be declaring the scriptures, greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. We should be speaking contrary to the devil's lies with God's truth. We need to start to pray. Uh, I think we can neglect that part of our prayer, but Jesus taught us to pray that way. 
He taught us to pray against the evil one. That's a part of our prayer. We should be putting on the full armor of God, pleading the blood of Jesus, declaring the scriptures that talk about us being overcomers, more than conquerors, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord sets up a standard against them. I mean, there's so many. When God sends forth his word, it does not return void. We stand on God's word. The, king, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. There's just so many prayers that we could pray. For this reason, the Son of God came. That for this reason, Jesus was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the enemy. We declare his works destroyed in Jesus' name. And so we, we need to, we need to uh, remember that part of our, of our praying time. Praying against, we have an adversary, so we need to be praying. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give life, life, and abundance. Whatever the enemy's throwing at us, there's, uh, Jesus already has a, a, a countermeasure, right? Oh, devil came to steal, kill, and destroy? Jesus said, I came to give life and life in abundance. Whatever the devil's throwing at you, Jesus is throwing something greater at, at us and at him. He said, you came, to, you came to kill, I came to give life. Right? Sanct Jesus prayed, sanctify them by your, your truth, by the truth. Your word is truth. He's cleansing and purifying. There's power in the word of God, power in the, in the blood of Jesus, power in prayer. There's power in taking authority in Jesus' name. See, it's not based on your, your or my goodness or your, your, your or my strength, it's based on the finished work of the cross where Jesus died and laid down his life. Amen? So always going to prayer that way, knowing it's not about how good I am, because none of us will pass that test. It's about how good Jesus is when he died on that cross, rose on the third day. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. No greater enemy could he have defeated. He defeated Satan on that cross when he rose on the third day, and now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, living to make intercession for us. As we know some people that could pray, right? We know some prayer warriors. We know some intercessors. Those people, there's certain people we know. I'm going to ask them to pray because I know they know how to pray. I know they, they pray with that. They, they pray and don't lose heart. Like, I'm going to ask them because I believe that God hears them. I've seen God use them in prayer, and we go to them, right? But, man, but really, we have, even greater than those people that God has placed around us, we have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, seated at the right hand of the Father who lives to make intercession for us. So we should pray, pray to God. And we can pray on our own. It's, it's nice to have prayer support. It's nice to have people joining us and agreeing with us with prayer. But also remember, your prayers are powerful and effective uh, because you're praying, to, you're praying to the Father in the name of Jesus, our great and compassionate high priest who lives to make intercession for us. That's a good time to say amen. And so it's gonna, I'm just going to conclude here. So we identify the enemy, make sure we pray. Um, remember, we're, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We're fighting against the enemy. And I think anytime something comes your way uh, that's, that's meant to discourage you, try to defeat you, bring you down, I, I believe that's the time to try to discern, uh, discerning of spirits. The Apostle Paul says it's a gift of discerning of spirits, but we can all discern by the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, it, this, is, this seems to be from the enemy. It's just it's good to stop and pray. Just stop and pray. Pray about everything. He said, pray, don't lose heart. The Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. It doesn't matter. You can never, you can never pray a bad prayer. The only bad prayer is the unprayed prayer. Somebody could say amen or ouch. Um, now, after this, the widow suffers much. She comes to the judge for justice. And this is something we have to learn to do. And we, we, don't just, we don't go to earthly judges imploring them to act for us. No, we ask our judge who is none other than the Father of God in heaven. And so the, the widow realized that if she struggled with her adversary, she, she wouldn't win. Um, but she went to, she went to the judge uh, to withstand her adversary. And so I kind of just want to end with this. Um, in the same way as the widow, if God's children strive independently without relying uh, by means of prayer on God's power and back into accusing the enemy to ask God for vindication, we too will be hurt. If we, do, if we don't pray, uh, if we don't strive, we don't persist, um, we don't rely on God through prayer, believing for and praying for his power and believing for his power to be released uh, against the accusations of the enemy, than, and asking God for vindication. Have you been wronged? Have you been betrayed? Backstabbed? Um, pray for vindication. God will vindicate you. Don't worry about what they said. Don't, wor don't worry about whether people believe them or not. Pray to God and he'll vindicate you. He'll vindicate you. So in this parable, the Lord Jesus teaches us the best way to overcome the adversary is to pray day and night to God, asking him to avenge us of our enemy by judging him and bringing justice. So we need to pray to God to bring justice. Bring justice. And then finally, Jesus makes this statement at the end, verse 8. He says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Why would he throw that in there? So as Christ's return draws nearer, every Christian should keep asking. We should be asking ourselves, especially during a time like this. This, 
this is an apocalyptic, but it, it kind of reminds us. Like, hey, I've heard more people say recently during these last five months, hey, Jesus is coming back, or it looks like Jesus is coming back. And I'll, I'll make a comment on that in just a minute. But we should be asking, especially this whole um, pandemic. Uh, now, look at the Bay Area. There's fires like everywhere around us right now. Our air, our, our air quality is very, very bad. Um, it's, it's reminding people of like uh, last days, end times. And I think God wants us to think about that now. He wants us thinking about that and, because that should prompt us to pray and seek his justice. But um, every Christian should be asking, am I showing my faith? Am I showing my faith through persistent prayer about everything? Am I praying about everything? You know what? Drive down the street. Just, you know, you can just shoot up quick prayers. Just shoot a quick prayer. God bless them. God bring justice to that person. Lord, look at that person. Uh, you know, pray for justice, a, a homeless person, a poor person. Maybe you see a, a prostitute on the side of the road. And instead of being judgmental, we, you, I'm not saying you do that, but I'm just saying instead of feeling that way or maybe feeling like, oh, or I, I, I want to keep... Shoot a prayer. God, I pray for justice. I pray for healing. I pray for salvation. What if we started praying that way, just throwing up prayers, you know, day and night, just wherever we go? So it doesn't just have to be you sitting or kneeling or pacing for an hour. It could be praying day and night. can mean you just releasing prayers as you go throughout your day. I think there's time for both, and we should exercise both. But um, praying about everything. Am I praying that God's justice will prevail and his purposes be accomplished? Are we, are we praying that for his... For his justice, God's justice to prevail and his purposes to be accomplished. And so finally, when the, when the Lord Jesus finishes the parable, he concludes with the final word. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So how will he find faith on the earth? How do we demonstrate, through this parable we learn, this is something we should always be doing. How do we demonstrate our faith? First and foremost, by praying. And, I, and uh, another thing I want to mention is often when we pray, we should be ready to be an answer to that prayer. Right? If God puts something on our heart to pray or we notice something, we, we have a heart of justice like God does and we pray for justice, uh, God, God may call upon us to also execute. So let's, let's, let's pray always and not lose heart, never give up, quit, but also be ready to, to be a part of the solution or the answer uh, of that prayer. God often does that. And so... We are in the last days, therefore we must pray more than ever for God's kingdom to come, and that the kingdom of darkness, the ruler of this age, our adversary, be overthrown. There's no greater work for which God's children should, uh, could do that today uh, than this work of persistent prayer. So we always ought to be praying and not lose heart. And so, you may have heard me say this before, uh, the pandemic, now this is something new. We've been seeing fires in the Bay Area recently. Um, over the last few years, uh, but now, now I saw a map. There's like we're there's a prayers like almost surrounding us in, in some way, and I had somebody mention to me today, man, this really feels like apocalyptic to me, like end times, like Jesus could be coming back. And I still I still believe that um, this is birth pangs. This is the beginning. Uh, these are contractions. I think these things happen so that we can be reminded that there is an end and Jesus will return. And this, this is meant to prompt us to pray. This is, this is meant to prompt us to search our hearts and really uh, see, are we in the faith? Are we praying for God's justice? Are we praying for God's purposes to be fulfilled? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Jesus said, you ought to pray always and not lose heart. He said, the elect cry out day and night. So there's, prayer's not an occasional thing. It's not an optional thing. We are God's elect, you and I. It's not just for leadership. It's not just for board members or people with the gift of prayer. No. Get that notion out of your head if, they, if that's what you think. Prayer is, is meant for every Christian. We always ought to pray and, and not lose heart. The elect cry out day and night. Will God not speedily avenge them? Prayer is an everyday thing. It's a constant thing, consistent thing, day and night thing, without ceasing thing. And we should be praying. And God, you know what? If we all started praying right now, just, just let's just say those who watch or join us and Temple of Family, if we just started praying, if we just started praying daily, crying out for justice, crying out for humanity, crying out for our loved ones, our friends, our city, our nation, just us, how powerful would that be? If all the body of Christ, every believer, 
and would, would cry out to God day and night for justice, how, how, how quickly would revival come? How quickly would justice come? How quickly would God move? How quickly would the gospel spread? Uh, it's, it, uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot is, is lacking because prayer is lacking. And so I believe God's given us a space this time this, during this pandemic to evaluate ourselves, given us a space and margin to, to uh, pray and reconnect to God on a deeper level. And so I believe these are birth pangs. These are reminders that our life on, our life on this earth is temporary, that Jesus will return, and there is, we are in the last days, and there will be an end. And so uh, we must be prepared. And so I encourage you, uh, let's start by praying. Let's be consistent and persistent, and we're going to see God do great and mighty things in our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Um, I also, before I pray, I just want to mention, um, I, we did have a parking lot service scheduled for this Sunday. We canceled last Sunday because of lightning storms. Those lightning storms caused the fires that are not all around the Bay Area. And so uh, a report came out today by the air people, um, California Health, Air Health and or Quality, uh, we're at the we're at the really we're at a really low air quality. They recommended that people stay inside through Sunday, so it's that bad already. It's like really thick out there. So um, we will just we're just going to decide now. We're going to go online. I'm sorry. I've really been looking forward to seeing everybody in the parking lot service. Um, we had to miss last week because of lightning storms, which is unsafe now because of air quality, and so. Um, We'll, if God willingly, the following Sunday, we'll do our next parking lot service. We're going to join online because we want everybody to remain healthy and safe. And so um, just continue to pray. We need to be praying. Pray for the Bay Area. Pray for these fires to end. Pray for the firefighters and all those involved uh, in combating this. And so there's, a, there's, there's many things to pray for, church, and so let's be praying. But uh, uh, we will not be having uh, parking lot service this Sunday because of the air quality is just way too bad. It's very, very poor. And so um, we, I had to close my windows in my house last night and all day today, even though it's hot and muggy um, because um, the air quality is so bad. So I apologize for those who look forward to uh, coming. I look forward to seeing you and being outside uh, with you, uh, getting to, to see you uh, with my own eyes instead of just seeing your name on the screen. But pray for me. Pray for your pastor always, please. Uh, pray for all the pastors of the church, the leaders. Thank you for your, uh, for your continuous generosity and giving. We're able to do many good things. Um, and run, continue to run the church because of such a, a, a wonderful uh, church family that continues to give and sow and believe in God and what he does here. Amen. So uh, praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Well, we thank you for this short but very powerful um, parable. You tell, us, you tell us we always, man always ought to pray and not lose heart. Lord, I pray for the spirit of prayer. Andrew Murray talked about it. Uh, Ian Bounds talked about it. He said there's a spirit of prayer that comes upon man. There's a spirit of prayer that can come up upon a church. Lord, I, we pray for that spirit of prayer to, to just come over us and that we would be, Lord, a, a, a church family, a church body, a house of prayer. We would be individually houses of prayer, and this would be a house of prayer uh, for all nations. Uh, Lord, that we would pray for justice. We'd pray... Uh, against the adversary, we pray for your kingdom come and your purposes to be fulfilled. Renew our hearts for prayer, Lord. If somebody used to pray and, and doesn't pray anymore, we, I pray that, Lord, you would breathe life uh, into their prayer, into their prayers and their prayer time upon their heart so that they'll uh, want to pray again, that you draw them in um, by, your, by your presence and for your glory. And so, Lord, we just pray that we'd be a praying people. We'd cry out. We, the elect, would cry out day and night. Lord, for justice. And we, we, Lord, we prepare our hearts and, uh, Lord, live our lives in, in light of eternity. You place eternity in man's heart. We know that, uh, Lord, you're coming soon. We believe that you will return. And, Lord, all that we're experiencing now is you uh, allowing us to, to see once again you're doing a new thing, Lord, and you want us to perceive it. Lord, you're, you're reminding us, Lord, that you're returning and that there's work to be done. Lord, when we want, we want to be counted. When you come, will the Son of... You said, well, I find, I, the Son of Man, find faith on the earth. Lord, we, we, want it, we want to be those who you look upon the earth and say, yes, I found faith in them. I want you to look at, at me and say, I found faith in him. Uh, Lord, we want to keep our faith, and we, and we keep our faith, and you'll find faith through you, the people, your people who pray. And so, God, be with us again. Lord, I pray, you pray to you to breathe life into our prayer time, our, our, our hearts, 
so that we, uh, Lord, be, be the, that elect that cry out day and night. Lord, bless each family. Uh, bless each uh, person who joined tonight. Uh, and uh, for the Bible study, I pray this word will be sealed in every heart and bear fruit for your glory. Bless our prayer, our prayer time on Friday. I pray it will be fruitful. Lord, we'll be here as your elect crying out uh, for your justice and against our adversary for your glory. We love you, thank you, and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Together we say amen. Uh, Friday night prayer. We'll be joining at 7 o'clock. I encourage you to join us. Uh, God bless you. Love you, Temple of La Cruz family and friends. And I uh, will see you soon.